new details on that fatal school shooting in Colorado. Overnight protests erupting at a vigil for the victims as we learn more about the hero students who helped stop the gunman. Our chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, is in Highlands Ranch, Colorado with the latest. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Robin. That was one of two vigils, and at that one that you just mentioned, the students seemed to rebel at the political tone taken by organizers chanting mental health. Instead, they wanted the focus to be on the three students who tackled that primary shooter, stripping him of his gun, and of course, one of those students paying for his courage with his life. Overnight, a vigil to remember the victims boiling over in anger. Frustrated students stalking out of the Highlands Ranch High School, demanding to be heard. The event featured politicians like presidential hopeful Colorado Senator Michael Bennett and gun control advocates speaking to a packed gymnasium. But the tone shifted with students and their parents protesting politics and blaming the press. This can be uh, an incredibly divisive or painful, awful time, or it can be a time where we come together. It spilled into the hallways, students chanting. This anger coming as a community grapples with a tragedy. 18-year-old Kendra Castillo was killed after being the first person to rush the shooter. Complete disregard for his own safety. He was immediately there to respond. He was immediately on the shooter and he was ready to end the threat. Witnesses say Castillo pinned 18-year-old Devin Erickson to the wall. That's when Brendan Bailey, a Marine recruit, also pounced. There was fear. Um, I still look back at it and I still feel a bit of fear when I think back to it. But after that point, it is just doing what I thought I should do. Just three days shy of graduation, Kendrick was a tinkerer into robotics who worked on his father's car and had told his dad that if he ever encountered a shooter, he'd fight. When I see the people that he saved, it makes me happy, and I know that my son wouldn't have had it any other way. But as any parent will tell you, you know, it's a heck of a trade-off. Students tried to resuscitate him, but it was too late. Joshua Jones also had leapt on the shooter, paying for it with two bullets. He's one of nine people shot, several still hospitalized this morning. I got to see uh, two, two heroes, two regular high school kids, two really awesome people uh, jump into action without any hesitation, and I was more than lucky to join them in doing that action. As that gunfire rang out, one 15-year-old student immediately started texting his father, saying, Dad, I love you, just in case. 36 hours later, he can't get the sound of that lockdown alarm out of his head or that sense of fear. No matter what, what you went through, there's no, there is no possible way to justify taking what you're feeling out and inflicting it on other people. Like many of the school, he knew both of the suspects. Erickson appearing in court, that fuchsia stripe of hair bobbing when he nodded to the judge. He and his 16-year-old alleged accomplice face up to 30 charges, including for murder. Now that young man, Chris, that 15-year-old was one of over 1,800 kids who made it out of that school completely unharmed, but he says he's not okay. He is emotionally scarred, and he says he's concerned about the normalization after these shootings. Now, one of the things the police investigation is now focusing on is how those two students obtained handguns when in Colorado is it is illegal to have or possess handguns for anyone under the age of 21. Robin. All right, Matt, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.